once again the lead out of the big fancy gleaming logo. Thanks, Joe, for that original design. Yeah, so here we go, some more mobility tests. And um, as you might have guessed, I'm doing something a little unique with this particular reveal. I'm revealing pretty much every facet of it as it's finished and uh, going to be going into a, a bit of extended... <laughs> what do you think? I wasn't going to open with that. A bit of extended commentary on the index tip. And uh, I'm going to get into some uh, methodology later in this video, um, the second half of this uh, presentation. So let's just see what's going on. And there actually is quite a bit of lot, uh, you know, quite a bit of lot. Yeah. There's a lot to talk about um, what you're looking at. Let me tell you what you're looking at. <clears throat> you're looking at the completed uh, index and the completed, well, everything you're looking at on this armature is complete. In fact, uh, even though the rivets have those terrible uh, dimples in them because I squeeze them in with my taped over plier instead of hammering them in, my, you know, authentically, I'm, I'm, I'm in the build process right now, obviously. But they are in their, per, you know, their permanent positions. They're in their accurate spots, and uh, I did that because we need to start seeing really where this mobility is going. And I'm giving this glove clack, this palm clack, this opening palm turn clack as much force as I've ever given it. No ginger approaches here. Um, uh, no gingerly approaches here. This thing got my full force. I've got duct tape on the bottom at various sections to keep it on. I managed to get a few takes, really going for it. Pulled off the authentic uh, pose and then the clack, and it was a real... Uh, it was a real pleasure seeing this thing come together. And if you look at the middle tip side here and the, and the index tip side, you're going to start noticing some subtle differences between the videos I've shot. And that's because at this point, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you when the switchover is going to happen, because we're going to revert to a previous form of these tips uh, about the halfway mark when I start talking about the tip, because I'm actually backtracking in this video. I'm going to show you what brought us to this point on this index tip. Uh, to that effect, um, this glove, every piece of it goes through a lot of different stages. You know, you're always hearing me talk about stage one, stage two, contouring, da 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 And it's not just lip service. I'm not blowing smoke. It really does happen. And we're going to be talking about that quite a bit. And I'm going to get into uh, a lot of my, my methodologies, as I always promised I would, for anybody who builds or is interested and you know, wants to see what's going on with this thing. Um, <clears throat> as we tested in the bathtub once again. Yep. As we tested in the bathtub once again, uh, one of my favorite sequences. You know, I, I, I display the glove, and I'm very high rev because I've worked all day to get to this point to sit down and do some commentary, so my, my voice is going to be very excited for a while. You know, I'm on that second wind here. <sighs> Another hell day. Anyway, um, so when I shot this, everything had been completed, and as I was saying, you might notice if you go ahead and rewind this um, backward a little bit, the side of the, you know, for instance, the side of the middle, the side of the index that I was just showing, the other side that you don't generally see, the right-hand side toward the pinky, starting to look drastically different. It's because as I build and I complete certain sections and segments, I then go back and I do the fine shaping and the fine tweaking with the magic tool, and, and you know, it's why I always say wait till the final, wait till the final, wait till the final, because you'll see little bits and tweaks and pulls and, and things that I do as I go along until I say it's done. And you'll see those little features. Oh, you know, there it is. There's that feature. And this is what I'm kind of doing right now. I'm starting to show this stuff. And I got a couple of comments I wanted to make really clear. This is the prototype, guys. This is Type M copper pipe. It's, it's the authentic pipe. It's heavy as hell. It's stiff. It's still malleable, but it's, it takes some force. And I'm going to be talking about things like the index light beams being more angular than, you know, the next finger. I'm going to be going into all of that. But right now I want to go into the fact that this is a prototype. So I'm cutting myself <laughs> uh, a certain degree of slack in things like toothing of the metal, and I'm going to be discussing that in a minute. Uh, things like, you know, nicks here or there, really fine scale stuff, which can be sanded, number one, but the, but the number two and the big number two of that is the fact that... I started with this index finger and I went down the row and by the time I got down the row there's virtually no toothing at all. It's because I'm constantly learning about this process. And in that process obviously I become Freddy Krueger. <laughs> I didn't plan this guys, I just happened to have the cuff on. Uh, and. Like anything else, you get better as you go along. So now I'm pretty much an expert at working with the pipe because I've been doing it for about three weeks. 
and that first finger is a little bit more nicked upon close inspection here or there. It's totally passable, especially when the weathering happens. I mean, my gloves that generally go out, sometimes you'll have a nick or two. It just happens. They're not meant to be absolutely pristine. However, that being said, uh, I do have the control and need to really minimize those little tool marks, uh, but you'll find the odd one here or there. But you may see them kicking up in certain light as I display this glove. Uh, and I wanted to make mention of it because it really is negligible, and uh, I don't want you guys to worry. I'll take care of it, as I always do. So as the titles say, we have backtracked. This is a couple of days ago, and we can see the index that I've been showing off here, which I'll be talking about, how it began, and what went into not only its shaping, but what goes into the glove on the whole. And keep in mind, as you're uh, about to be led into the uh, second, uh, second long segment of this video, uh, that if you want to see where the glove is at after everything you're watching now, just backtrack and watch until the first uh, area of text appears telling you that we have backtracked. And that is what the final results are and were. So yeah, obviously it's me again. And I wanted to take a minute where I could as I'm building this to talk about whatever it is that's on my mind. Because this process is a very big deal to me. And you guys all know that. So to that effect, let's talk index blades. Let's talk index knuckles. Let's talk index stalls. <clears throat> There's a lot of ground to cover on this glove, and I'm, I'm shooting pretty much everything I possibly can. Within reason. And discussing things that I think about when I do a glove build, uh, especially when I'm doing this glove build. So let's take a, a look at something. Uh, a lot of people who I've come across in years gone by, um, one, of the, one of the most common questions I get from, from people who are interested in this, with me specifically, is, why is crew gear this versus uh, uh, what is the totality of, of, of how I encapsulate my work? How do I describe what it is that I actually do? Why is it, why do I go on about minutia where these things are, are concerned? And, and I do that because this process is all about minutia, it's all about nuance, and it's all about detail, and there's a million different ways to make a glove. A million. Well, maybe not a million. Maybe a dozen. Or a hundred. Depends on who's making it. And I'm by no means an exception to that rule. So, my take on things is very much akin to how I see the world. Very, very fine, very, very clear, very, very minuscule detail. Critical. OCD across the board. And so I apply that to my gloves, because I don't have a choice. And it helped me pick up a few things that I think I'm known for, and uh, that I can share with you, whoever's watching. So let's do that. And what I want to share is, uh, right now I want to talk about the index in its totality. And this is, obviously I'm disassembling the Becker clone. And I work, you know, again, I work between like three or four different stages of gloves for reference. These are my main build knuckles, and these are the tips that I use because they're, while well, the, the templates weren't totally accurate, whereas the glove I'm doing now, uh, for my purposes, are, uh, the bends are still dead on. So, or at least close to as dead on as they can be with lesser accurate templates, but you get my drift. I, I know at this point, with my experience, how to anticipate pickup, and, and it's why uh, uh, things that, I, that I, I know to watch out for, it's why I can, I can now build a backplate off a of visual or reference uh, from screen and still use a hybrid backplate that has all the features of all three, basically, and I can go, okay, this is feature one, this is feature two, da 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 da. I don't always need to have it in front of me. And There are certain things always to look out for, and kind of segues into what I'm going for here, which is the index. And this is a really neat detail that a lot of um, a lot of uh, guys have commented on that I really try to nail every time. And it's really evident now because this is my final index piece 
uh, that I'm looking at, um, that I'm working on right now, the tip. Uh, we're going to replace that test tip, which is the very first piece of pipe that I built just to see if I could do it. And I built it off another template from another part of another glove. And uh, one of these things, there's this double crease. This is what I'm getting at. There is a double crease, if I can get it in the light. If you take a look at my Becker clone, we're looking at, let's prop it. Let's prop it on this faux test pinky. Uh, no, that's not actually. Okay. <laughs> All right. You see the side, the, the top side beam that floats into the uh, into the uh, the knife joint. Well, if you turn the sucker down, you know everybody knows that this curve right here in the front curves in and swoops out. And there's this nice little fan tail that comes out. And the fan tail, as you turn the glove over, bleeds into the top crease that we're now going to be discussing, which is actually a side crease. Do you see how this? folds right here. There are two distinct folds, and this is actually on too much of an angle this way by about four degrees. I need to actually anchor it a little bit down, but it's totally passable. It's within the 95 percentile. If I want to get 100 percent, I take this crease and I shift it up that way, back and down that way, by about three or four degrees. But for all intents and purposes, it's fine. It, sep it separates the top crease, which is this top crease, and folds into the bottom crease. And this bottom crease is actually not as creased as it needs to be. It could have been creased another 15%. And I actually did that. I knew to watch out for this on the, uh, on the pipe. And you know, you've got this, this S-swerve indentation on the top crease also that goes, uh, if I pop this here, let's see if I can do this. God, this is not easy. Okay, here we go. Uh, we've got this very, very subtle indentation and outward S-curve, and it is subtle as hell, but it's an S. There's a pinch here that comes through. And as we go around the uh, side, now you can really see it, here's this side crease. So it's a one crease and a two crease, and this bottom side crease creates this fantail swoop. And as we turn over the top portion, what needs to happen is this whole thing needs to become the side crease and hide those bends so we have that completely acute axis that looks completely straight and flush. Again, as we tip over, we now see the fan tails and all the little bump shaping that this crease hides as the side of this index tip. It's really quite fascinating. And so I always create that first. And on here, you're really going to see it, A, because I've creased it. And it's great because if you look at this shot here, which is really well known, you can see both of these creases just visible through the muck on the glove. And again, you know, I take a bit of liberty with my knowledge, but this is pretty damn accurate in terms of its position, and I've also anchored the fulcrum, the back end, just about three degrees down, so it's a little bit wider on the back. So we see now, we've got the beginning of that S curve, Going back, the pinch, which I'll pick up as I start shaping the side of this. It's really bright, but there you go. And then also, I have this wonderful side seam that when I turn this over, it's going to create that flushed side, which I'll, I will actually push out this way to bulb out, and I'll do that with brute force from underneath all the bends. It's how I get all this rounding procedure. You know, it's not all just shaped straight. It's completely... It's comp I always said this, think of it like water pushing on a bag. Everything's got a subtle rounded volume. So, so subtle. Not a straight edge on this thing. But this double crease, as I like to call it, is something that I really try to match. And I do it first because I'm going to inexorably bend then around it and uh, start working the back end of this thing. Uh, but it all leads into the other shapes. Everything, every shape on these gloves leads into the next. And it's something I always try to maintain. Uh, a huge consistency on. And on that I want to talk about the actual index knuckle. And here's the final. And this is my prototype, guys. So I give myself a lot of, a little slack. A little slack like toothing of metal or marring of metal or what have you. And it's pretty fine. I mean, it's considering I used this to shape well over half this glove, in which I did go ahead and dremel down the edges on to soften it up so it's more circa my magic tool since 1989. 
uh, you still have to be very careful. And you can only do this in one or two swipes before you start making nick marks. And the odd nick mark is going to happen, and it'll disappear with, you know, uh, weathering and all that, which will be done. For the most part, we want it pristine. This was my first true test piece I built. And if you see, you can look close. And this is all about being transparent. This is fine. It's totally passable. And again, you're picking up sheen like crazy on this thing. So everything looks more pronounced. But I'm going to tell you, all these bends, and you've seen enough video, on certain lighting, they will look more extreme than other lighting. They will look completely flat like the Becker clone does from other lighting. You know, these, these bends, these little bulbs, these little poles, they're all here. They're all in the original glove. It's just a matter of how the light looks. But that being said, this was also my first test piece, and I'm going to be completely honest with you. This is always the first piece that I bend on an index, this one little bend over. And while it is not overzealous in degree, you know, here it is on my master build temp also, and you can see that it does have that bend on that side. Every, you know, this is all purposely done, guys. Every move here I do is deliberate. However, this was my first piece. This was my first bend. I didn't know yet how the metal worked. And frankly, I didn't get this seam quite as clean as I would have liked it. It needed to be just 10 or 15% cleaner. And I got these two, and you can almost see it, I got two metal nick marks in here, which really, even though it's really subtle, and just ever the slightest little dent right here, the slightest little goose bump, I call it, from the tool, it's passable. It, when we weather this thing up, you're not even going to see it. It's going to look perfectly fine, even on close inspection, but I'm going to know it's there. So we'll see how I do. If I decide at the end that I want, because everything else is pristine and perfect for how I want it, uh, if I decide at the end when I'm sanding these little edges down and cleaning up the final little bits and pieces that I want to go ahead and redo this piece just to see if I can maybe just get it a little cleaner, I may, but it's my prototype. So if I don't, please be aware. I'm aware of it. It's negligible. Again, we're only trying to get into the 95 percentile. And as long as we have all those features, we'll see how we look at the end. And if it, if it's, if it's, you know, it's good to go, it's good to go. I'm really not worrying about it because I know in certain lights we won't even see it. And it's still accurate with the bend procedure. But uh, if I want to clean up that little minus, you know, minuscule OCD nightmare, I may do it. But we're trying to be as transparent as we can. The other thing I wanted to talk about are the blades. And I'm going on and on about these P210 replicas that are going on here. And I'll show those off pretty soon, to be sure. Um, you know, uh, we're gonna, when I do the reveal on this, my prototype is going to be out of the opening shot. There's some grind work that was done on the tips of these things that is much closer to how the Becker clone is today, at least in the tip procedure. Um, you know, at least on the index where you've got this, you know, this telltale blunted off front end. Uh, that's going to be present on my prototype. I know Joe Scringe wants the blades perfect and doesn't want the blade break. I get all that, and he's going to get bad, and, and Congroy doesn't care, and Trav, I'll talk to, you know, I'll talk to Trav about what he wants on his blades. Um, but each blade, rest assured, has its own character uh, by the time it reaches this stage, as it looks today. Um, but the P210 replicas are so pristine and perfect, it's going to be hard. It's going to be a real hard uh, angle for me to go ahead and grind those down. But I'm going to go ahead and do it. Uh, and uh, the ones that I have on the glove right now are my temporary blades, which... I made specifically again for the tip work, and uh, you know they all start with my, with my master. Um, go down the rung. Anyway, that's it. I wanted to discuss a few things that were on my mind uh, as I work through the, uh, the rest of the week and hours and evenings and months and years and <sighs> go through this process until probably the day I die. Looks like. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to talk about all that and kind of show off some, some interesting details that fascinate me as a glove builder and are the things and the answers to the questions I get about why I do this. Because it just suits my nature of figuring things out and you know, making them just so and, and being able to, to grab those, those, those small little things that, that are almost impossible to see that, that frankly, I was still finding out 25 years later.
So I hope you enjoyed it. I know I rambled on, but for Love Builders, hopefully you'll get something out of it. And uh, as always, this is your humble host saying, whatever you do, keep your fingers crossed. This is a big job.